Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're all doing well. I see that there are a lot of questions about my uh, faith and things like that, and I want to take this opportunity to talk a bit more to you, and also to answer some unanswered questions. Now that I talk to you people here on YouTube, I see that there are a lot of people from different backgrounds who support me, and even uh, some who choose to support me further on Patreon, and I'm very, very thankful to every single one of you, no matter how you support me. When I started all of this on Instagram, the majority of people interacting with me were atheists and Hindus. Now that I'm here on YouTube, I see a lot of uh, Christians subscribing and also uh, finding me on social media and following me there, and I appreciate it very much. Sometimes I see people arguing over each other's beliefs in the comment section, N not so often. Some people ask me about my beliefs, and others just offer their prayers. I don't believe in God anymore, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, I appreciate every single one of those prayers very much because I believe that they are well intended and genuine. To me, your beliefs don't really matter. I mean, you can be Christians, Jews, Deists, uh, Hindus, Buddhists, Atheists, whatever. You surely have your own beliefs, you surely have your own reasons why you hold on to those beliefs. It doesn't concern me. It doesn't really matter to me what your beliefs are. It matters that you are humans. And I appreciate every single form of uh, interaction, appreciation and connection. I like it very much. It really doesn't take much to make me happy and I value every person that I come across. All the things mentioned, and so much more that I want to talk about, gave me the idea to make another video to the Why I Left Islam collection, even though it was meant to be only two videos. I just feel like this is necessary. I will talk a bit about my experiences with Islam and after Islam, the adventures that my mind went through, and uh, how losing my precious religion changed my views completely, and also about religion and irreligion. This will be very personal. If you haven't watched my Why I Left Islam videos yet, you can do it now or later. They are pretty long and uh, in the second video I was sick, but, I, but it was okay. Anyway. <laughs> I ended my second Why I Left Islam video saying that I dedicate the rest of my life to criticizing Islam and to exposing it for what it is. I also said that it is a horrible religion, more so than any other religion. After I left Islam, that was not immediately what I thought. I remember the moment when I first told myself that I don't believe in Allah anymore. I arrived at home, I was about to open the door, I just stood there and thought a lot, and then I took the courage and finally said, I don't believe in Allah anymore, I am not a Muslim anymore. It was scary to be honest, because as a Muslim, uh, I was always so terrified of that. I used to spend hours before going to sleep, praying to God, uh, so that he doesn't let me go astray. But now finally it happened. I was scared because I didn't really know what would happen now, but I was also uh, relieved because I let it out finally. It was 2014 and I was still living by myself in Turkey and working. At work I had this closeted atheist who was um, a very intelligent guy, but also some form of hardcore materialist. He had this personality of uh, not caring much about human emotions, especially at work. Like, work is everything. Human emotions don't matter. If you are sad about something, please go out. That's, that's the type he was. Anyway, I exchanged a lot of thoughts with him, and that person actually helped me to get out of this. It wasn't very emotional. I was just uh, sitting uh, with him at work one day because I had this massive conflict with myself, and I just needed someone to talk to. And um, so I sat down with him. I told him about my little doubts, and he was just like, um, let it go. I don't believe in that crap. You don't have to believe in it. Uh, okay. That's actually when I first learned that he was an atheist. But it gave me courage. It gave me courage to actually talk about things, to question things more. Because if you are in this uh, situation, if you are in a conflict with yourself, and you see other people uh, being in something similar, or being um, having arrived at the result of something similar, then it just gives you some more courage and some more to think about. Well, until then, everything seemed quite fine. I was getting out of it, I got completely out of it. Um, I started doing by myself again and doing stuff that I like, listening to different old music that I like. I started having very much fun, but shortly afterwards, something very unexpected happened. I mentioned it briefly in my second Why I Left Islam video. I found myself suddenly in this uh, extreme form of depression. It is something that many people experience who change their beliefs, especially uh, those who let go of religion completely. I can only describe it as a dark and deep emptiness inside. I felt suddenly alone. I lost my guidance. I lost the God. 
I lost religion, the religion that defined life to me before. Suddenly the whole point of life was not there anymore, and I felt like I was walking on thin ice. Or I, f I even felt like I had nothing to walk on anymore. I was asking myself what the point in life is. Everything felt bad. I started uh, losing joy in everything. I started staying home more and I refused to go out with people. I quit my job, I got a different one. I cut ties with uh, close friends, which was probably the result of my mental state back then. And I felt completely alone. One day I came home and, s and saw a talk show on Turkish TV where they were talking about near-death experiences and the conception of life and afterlife. I felt pretty bad that day already, but when I came home and saw that on TV, I found myself in this deep space in my mind, questioning everything that I thought about already. I went back to all the reasons why I came to the conclusion that there is no Allah, and I uh, found myself coming to the same conclusion over and over again, and I was totally beaten as to what to do now. So I went to my bedroom, and I was living in this uh, apartment building, very high, and I came to the bedroom and uh, I actually wanted to jump. I wanted to end everything. I almost committed suicide. I was never that determined to do it. What held me back was thinking more about my parents and determining to focus on all the good things in life. Uh, people, the world, myself. Anyway, so I had a very long phase of depression after leaving Islam. It lasted for months, but in the end it was over. It was 2015 when I came to the conclusion that there is most probably no God. I have so many reasons to come to that conclusion. It's all logical, but um, it's not my primary subject and I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even care about it anymore. I also have no problem with religious people and religions other than the Islamic system which masquerades as religion. With leaving religion, I also started to question so many things in my mind, so many views and so many ideas that I had. I went through basically everything in my mind. In these last few years, I thought about many more things than in the 20-something years before. Women's rights, music, how women are treated in society compared to how women are treated in Western society, homosexuality, individual freedom, morals and how much we need them. I thought about the Jews and about Israel and so many other things and I realized just how much my views were driven by this Islamic system. So I basically took everything apart, I put everything down in my mind, and then I uh, started to go through everything and to make up my own mind about things, without depending on this totalitarian system. I found myself more and more tolerant of people, with all the mistakes they make, and with their individual freedoms. Since my background was Islam and I was still living in a Muslim country, one of the most important things to focus on and to think about was how women are treated. I felt more and more disgusted with how women are treated in the Islamic world and how they don't even realize that the Islamic mentality keeps them down, it keeps them silent, it keeps them weird and ignorant, indifferent about their own freedoms and even approving of having less freedom than others. After the suicide thing I started to go online and following more like-minded people, or that's what I thought back then. Uh, I started liking atheist pages on Facebook and Instagram. With that anger towards my own religion and my own traditions, I started to join the American atheists in bashing religion online. I noticed very quickly that the atheist community in America is uh, extremely harsh with Christianity, but whenever Islam is brought up, people start to suddenly complain about it and suddenly say, oh, well, we are against all religions, you don't need to signal out this one. Somehow that only happens when Islam is mentioned. There is never a problem with, with criticizing Christianity. So, when I worked out my uh, hate and rebellion inside and solved the whole thing, I was looking more for um, criticism towards Islam, which is uh, nicely done without apologizing in every second sentence. It was just more and more disappointing to see that many uh, anti-Christian atheists have this attitude to uh, stop and mention all religions whenever Islam is mentioned. I will talk more about that at some point. I met my wife back in 2016. Uh, she has an Instagram page that was back then very much about criticizing religion. And when I saw that she was also quite freely, uh, harshly criticizing Islam with her posts, I started interacting more and more with her page and uh, somehow we contacted each other personally. 
She came to visit me in Turkey and we talked a lot to each other. We also talked about uh, Islam and how it is by far worse than other religions. And that I have so much to say about it, but that I also don't see the atheist community, or other critics for that matter, uh, talking factually about Islam. Then she gave me the idea to create a page on Instagram for that. And I'm so thankful for that. So I created some accounts that I thought were funny, but they were very quickly shut down because I didn't really take it very seriously back then. I drew this profit head in five minutes on some computer software just for fun. Then I actually started using it and called my new account The Prophet. That's where everything began. Later at some point when Muslims were uh, again invading my page, I changed it to The Apostate Prophet and I liked it that much better because it was unique and I kept it. But even after I started doing this myself, I changed so much because I was just in the middle of a process. At the beginning, I did it only for fun on Instagram. I never thought that I would have a channel on YouTube and talk to you people here. I was still rebellious and I was still posting stuff about all religions, which by the way is never all religions, no matter what they claim. But especially during the 2016 atmosphere where uh, Hillary and Trump were rallying and where social justice became a very, very crazy issue, I started to distance myself from, uh, from the left-leaning mindset much more. And I distanced myself more and more from the anti-Trump masses. Not because I like Trump. I don't and I didn't. It's because I saw some form of betrayal in many people who uh, oppose Trump heavily and because many of them don't oppose Trump rationally and fairly. But it was more about the uh, betrayal part. <laughs> Imagine you come out of this religion and this culture where women are systematically oppressed, individual freedom is not a thing, you are in danger because the religion orders your death, you cannot speak, there is no free speech in any country that believes in the same religion, you have to come forward or suffer. Then you look at the West, at the beloved West, where people are free and progressive, and you see them inviting your oppressors and accusing you of hate. I also figured out that many people in America who claim to be irrational in politics are not rational at all. They end up defending Islam and Muslims, being uh, completely irrational and ignorant about very clear statistics, promoting stupid things like intersectional feminism, and being against the culture of Western people. Because they somehow think that being Western is totally equal to being inherently oppressive, guilty, and responsible for making the world a better place for people who don't even want a better world. In short, I was against religion altogether and had discussions with people of uh, totally different religions. But I realized the difference between Islam and other religions. And I saw that many just feel this uh, social pressure to express that they are only criticizing Islam and that all religions are equally bad and that most Muslims are peaceful and that we have to protect Muslims while we criticize Islam, that we have to be uh, secularist anti-theists who are against all religions otherwise we are hypocrites. I just couldn't buy that. I have a free mind. I grew up in the West and I love the West because I know the difference between the West and the Islamic world because I lived in both of them. I can't possibly come and claim that uh, yeah, we are all the same and all religions and cultures are all the same. It's nonsense. I know that Christians themselves improved society together with seculars, but Christians themselves did that. And Muslims did not do that, because Muslims didn't choose to do that. Because Islam is by far more backwards than Christianity has ever been. I don't have to, and I don't want to, go on and consider Christians and Western people uh, slave mongers. Because I know that Muslims and Islam ran slavery long before the West and long after the West. So it would be completely stupid and irrational to uh, come and say, well, Western people are like this and we should respect Muslims. No. I don't have to think that Christianity is just as bad as Islam. No. I learned that Christians treated their women much better 400 years ago than women are still treated in Saudi Arabia. I don't have to bring up the Crusades all the time. Because I know that the Crusades should have happened hundreds of years before they happened. And they could have been much more brutal. Because they were a very late reaction to aggressive Muslim expansions into Christian territory and liberties in Christian lands worsened when Muslims took control. I'm not denying that bad things happened during the Crusades, like the Crusaders attacking um, the Byzantines and weakening the Eastern Orthodox Church, which eventually only helped Muslims. 
My point is, I don't have to be, and I don't want to be a politically correct critic of Islam. I don't have to do that. I would consider myself a hypocrite if I had to add that not all Muslims are bad whenever I criticize Islam. I would consider myself a hypocrite if I had to end every critical sentence with all religions are equally bad. Anyway, uh, I became much more closer with my wife in time. I initially had that plan to move to Europe because I just couldn't take living in Turkey anymore. And I was almost there, I was almost leaving. But then things changed and we became closer with my wife. Uh, we decided to get married and to move to America and to have a baby and so on. I arrived in America where I can find myself again and be myself again. Where I can remember how beautiful it is to live in the West. Where people have their freedoms. Where women are free and where they are not just little puppets who serve men. Where women can wear whatever they want without 10 out of 10 men looking at them as if they were food. Where there is tolerance, where people don't beat up each other over everything. Where people don't attack you because you have a different faith. Where children are loved and not constantly beaten and yelled at. Where there is freedom of speech. Where people actually care about life and the world. Instead of considering it uh, a bad distraction on the path to Allah. And where therefore society is constantly improving instead of being stuck in the 7th century. Where people want to improve things instead of being forced into progress and liberty. Where you can sharply criticize the government without legal consequences. Where you can be proud to be free. More importantly, after I left Islam, I became such a happy person, especially with the help of my wife and our new life. I'm not a slave to that totalitarian system anymore. I don't have to regret everything that I do constantly, because Allah aka Muhammad doesn't like it. I can laugh about everything. I know how to love my child, and how to teach them love, freedom and self-confidence, instead of fear, obedience and intolerance. I don't have to judge people anymore based on the most intolerant major ideology that we have. I can see them as humans instead and acknowledge their flaws and my flaws. I'm not intolerant and filled with pride that makes me angry when people disagree with something. I don't have to tell them that they are wrong when they want to live their life the way they want to live their life. I don't have to disrespect women and treat them like a dangerous piece of meat by refusing to talk to them or refusing to shake their hands. I can just be a tolerant human who wants to live a good life and who wants others to live a good life as well. And that's one of the reasons why I criticize Islam. For very long phases in my life, I lived on the verge of death. I was so broken by my upbringing and by Islam because obedience and my personality just doesn't work well together. For the first time in my life, now that I'm in America, now that I married my wife and we have a child, I feel inner peace. For the first time in my life, I feel completely alive and happy. I still have broken pieces inside of me because it just takes a long time to get out of you once you have that. But I feel so much happier than I ever felt before. And I feel how I'm healed day by day. I was broken due to Islam and I'm happy after Islam. If you live Islam thoroughly, you will be broken. And if you know a bit about psychology, you know why. Such a restrictive, oppressive, chauvinist, supremacist system like Islam. It just takes away your personality. It changes you completely. It makes you sad. It makes you long for the things that your personality wants. It makes you angry and it makes you so intolerant of speech and of ideas. It breaks you down. That's why Muslims are so sensitive and so intolerant, so angry, and so ready to uh, put their ideology over things that are so much more wonderful. The religion of Islam does that to you, and it's great to escape it and to tell others about it. It would just be great if people in the West didn't interfere and label it as hate, just because they don't understand Islam and your motives. I have read the Quran more than three times, I studied the Hadith thoroughly. I tried to live Islam the best way I could. I tried to follow it word by word. I really did a very great job, I think. And here I am fighting against it. Because it destroys freedom. It destroys cultures. It destroys women. Progress. Tolerance. It destroys life. And nothing is more important. Nothing is more valuable than life. I know many Muslims refuse to see the things the way they are because everything that is contrary to Islam seems ugly and bad to them. That's why they come to me and tell me that I'm depressed and desperate and that I just want to do filthy things and that I will uh, go crazy, whatever. 
Guess what? I'm so much happier than ever. Suck on that. <laughs> I hope more and more people can see the same thing and change and become so much better and happier. And that's how we make the world a better place. Thank you for watching. I know this was long. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I will be back next week and I will have some great announcements to make. I will start live chats and I will also do my Q&A sessions soon. But uh, more importantly, some very great people will join me here on this YouTube channel. Uh, and I will announce that further uh, next week, so stay tuned. If you want to support me, you can do so on Patreon. My channel is not monetized and probably never will be, so you won't see ads on my channel. The link to Patreon is in the description. I appreciate every kind of support very much. Thank you all so much. You can tell me what you think and all other questions that you have below in the description. I appreciate it very much. Thank you all. Have a great weekend and stay away from Islam.